Okay, I think this is live. So, uh, this is a uh, blog, and um, the subject of this blog is mentally preparing myself for Terrifier 3, which uh, opens today, and I, in a either completist or stupid decision, have uh, bought a ticket to see uh, Terrifier 3 at a uh, 7 p.m. Uh, screening at the uh, Carlton Cinema here in uh, Toronto. And um, th I actually bought the ticket for the Carlton before I realized that uh, it's actually going to be playing in a select Cineplex uh, theaters, which, uh, given how um, extreme the uh, Terrifier films are, I'm actually kind of surprised that it is getting released in a major chain. And um, so I'm um, trying to mentally prepare myself to uh, see uh, Terrifier 3. So um, admittedly, I'm not a big fan of the series. And, uh, uh, it's m more seeing it because, like, I'm a freelance film critic. I have a bit of a reputation of being a horror critic, or at least a horror friendly critic. And, uh, I've seen the uh, first two Terrifier films, so. Uh, seeing the third film is more um, completist than anything else, but um, I do admit that I am a bit worried after the reports of uh, Terrifier playing uh, festival screenings and people walking out in the first 10 minutes, and then I've seen some other vlogs that say exactly why people have been walking out in the first 10 minutes, and it is uh, quite uh, nasty, so um, I'll actually uh, probably, uh, that's a uh, return to my uh, original reviews of Terrifier. So um, I saw the uh, first two Terrifier films relatively uh, close together. So um, I saw the uh, first uh, Terrifier on the Tubi in early October 2022. And here is what I thought about that. Uh, so I gave it... Uh, one and a half stars and I say an incredibly nasty film and not in a good way uh, follows a trend in recent indie slashers I um, specifically mention uh, Victor Crowley uh, which uh, fetishizes the ultra gory and often quite uh, misogynistic kills with little real concern for the characters or story and uh, the fact that this sequel, uh, the fact that um, Terrifier 2 got a sequel really says a lot about a subjection of horror fandom that I want no part of. Admittedly, I thought it was going to be one and done. I thought I was going to see the first Terrifier on Tubi. I did not like it, and I had no intention to see the second uh, Terrifier. And, uh, well, let's just say uh, Curiosity killed the cat, and I went to see Terrifier 2 theatrically. And uh, let's uh, read my uh, original review. Art, of Crown Art the Clown continues to con returns to continue his re reign of terror in Terrifier 2. One year after the Halloween night massacre that took the lives of nine people and left the sole survivor, Victoria Hayes, played by Samantha Scafty, horribly disfigured Art the Clown, played by David Howard Fortin, is uh, resurrected by a supernatural force. He uh, continues his uh, indiscriminate killing spree in the town of Miles County, this time targeting teenager Sienna Shaw, played by Lauren Lavera, and her younger brother Jonathan, played by Elliot Fulham. So, Terrifier 2 is the sequel to the 2016 cult hit slasher film, once again written and directed by Damien Leon. This is technically the third film featuring the villain Art the Clown, first introduced in Leon's 2013 anthology film 
All Hallows Eve, featuring the original 2011 Terrifier short film as part of the narrative. Unlike the original Terrifier, which was filled with nasty and extremely gory kills of no real protagonist, Terrifier 2 introduces us to Sienna Shaw. At the start of the film, Sienna is creating an angel Halloween costume inspired by the artwork of her late father. The story of Terrifier 2 is set into motion when Sienna has a nightmare about Art the Clown, which somehow results in a fire starting in her bedroom. In addition, Jonathan, who has been exhibiting an unhealthy obsession with Art the Clown, gets in trouble with his mother, Barbara, played by Sarah Voigt, for an incident at his school. As Sienna and her friends, Brooke, played by Kaylee Hyman, and Allie, played by Casey Hartnett, Prepared to attend the Halloween party, Art the Clown surfaces to resume his killing ways. So, before the release of Terrifier 2, I caught up with the original film earlier this month, and I was left shocked by the level of depravity in the film, including several kills that I interpreted as highly misogynistic. At the very least, I can say that Terrifier 2 is a better film with a greater emphasis on dark humor, including a victim who stays alive despite being mutilated behind, beyond recognition and having a protagonist we can root for, as opposed to Victoria Hayes from the original who was introduced as a supporting character and only happened to be the one barely living at the end. However, despite significantly improving from the original, I can't fully get on board with Terrifier 2 since it was just plain mean-spirited. While I applaud the film for celebrating practical gore effects, most of Art the Clown's victims are mutilated by beyond recognition to the point where it can be nauseating. In addition, the aforementioned dark humor disappears in the climax of a 2 hour and 18 minute film. As Art the Clown is relentless in his torture of both protagonists, including a particularly nasty sequence involving a cat of nine tails. Also, while most of the cast is relatively solid, Sarah Voigt as Sienna and Jonathan's lover, Barbara, is quite cringe-inducing with her line delivery. However, I do have to give praise where praise is due, as former mine David Howard Fortune has made Art the Clown's character his own. I find the character more creepy when he is not killing and just standing there watching his intended victims. Terrifier 2 introduces a child psychic for Art the Clown, credited only as Little Pill Girl, played by Emily McLean who somehow plays a role in his backstory, which is alluded to throughout the film and will likely be forever explored in the inevitable third Terrifier film. I also have to make note of some other cameos from Scream Queen, Felicia Rose, Sleepaway Camp, and Professor Little Wrestler, Chris Jericho, who appears in the mid credit scene setting up the third chapter. On one hand, Terrifier 2 is a significant success story for independent horror since it is a crowdfunded sequel to original but now has an immense cult following. I just wish all the success went to a film franchise that was a little less nasty and mean-spirited. So, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the Terrifier series. So, why am I going to see the uh, Terrifier 3? Um, once again, it's uh, curiosity killed the cat, or killed people in very brutal and extreme ways. <laughs> I don't. I really don't know why I'm going to see that. <laughs> I am. I'm probably gonna regret this. I've heard. <laughs> just, I am a horror fan, but I'm like not an extreme horror fan, and like. I'm going to probably make sure not to eat for at least an hour before seeing the film and like <laughs> I just don't know. Um I do have to know that um even though I'm not a fan of the series, I still respect the uh Terrifier films. Um uh last year I went to uh Five Mirror in the Falls at uh, Niagara Falls and um, uh, both Damien Leon and uh, David Howard Fortin were um, guests at the convention and I attended their uh, panel and um, they seem like genuine people who are passionate uh, about the Terrifier films. I actually asked 
to question during the panel. I, I remain respectful during the panel, even though I'm not really a big fan of the series. And, um, and then I got to uh, interview uh, Chris Jericho at uh, Fantasia for the uh, film Dark Match. Uh, Chris Jericho is a huge fan of the Terrifier films. He has a cameo in the second film. And I, at the end of the interview, I asked, are you in Terrifier 3? And he said, of course I am in Terrifier 3. And things don't turn out too well for me. And, <laughs> and that um, you probably most I posted that as a short uh, earlier today and so um, as of this recording um, a few hours away from seeing Terrifier 3 I do not know if I'll do a follow up video review of Terrifier 3 uh, probably just stick to the written review that'll go up tomorrow but I'm trying to prepare myself to see the third film of the uh, Terrifier franchise and Hopefully, I do not regret going to see this extreme horror film that will probably churn my stomach and I just, oh boy, oh, what the fuck am I getting in myself into? Uh, well, uh, that's it for this vlog, mentally preparing myself for uh, Tier 5 3. I, don't know if I mentally prepare myself. I think I probably am agitating my anxiety more than I really need to. And uh, I hope that the people who are excited for Terrifier 3 uh, go see it and cheer the what are sure to be extremely bloody and gory kills that is probably going to traumatize some teenagers who are going to go see it at the Cineplex Scotiabank Theater. It's playing in the AVX screen. That's like the biggest screen at the Scotiabank and it's going to be playing Terrifier 3. And I think, uh, actually, I think the first screening uh, probably happened by now, but like I am going to a much smaller screen because I only pay $10 for the ticket and I'm not paying $20 to see Terrifier 3, no matter. <laughs> I think it's going to be successful. I think they're saying it's going to be Joker at the box office. And like, that's so ironic that an independent serial killer clown is going to be the clown prince of crime. And oh boy, this is going <laughs> to be an interesting time. And uh, I think I really have to do a follow-up video now, but, um, okay, so, Terrifier 3, it opens today, I'm going to go see it, uh, you can check my social medias, uh, Instagram, threads, SKM movies, you can see, i uh, post my immediate reaction on those platforms, and I am Sean Gilly, and I am going to see you next time, and Oh, really? Why am I going to go see Terrifier 3? I'm like Joe Bob now, ranting after I complete the vlog because I am... I am very anxious about going to see this killer clown. So, <laughs> that's it. I'm going to see you next time. That's the end of this vlog. I'm actually trying to push it up to 15 minutes. That's why I'm... <laughs> okay, so, see you next time. <laughs>